let's start with opiates, which is heroin, Oxycontin, any other type of pain pill. Um, and so the feeling you get from them, you know, so t heroin can come in powder form. It can be a white powder, a tannish powder, but the most common one around these area, this area is black tar heroin, which is just a sticky, goopy piece of goop. It smells like vinegar and, you know, and, and that's the most common one here. Now the, if you s ever see your kid or whoever taking tinfoil into their room or um, taking straws out of the, uh, your soda drink from the gas station or anything like that, those are warning signs. The most co one of a really common way is to smoke it off tinfoil and that you can do that with the heroin and the pills. Um, some people, if it's the powder, they, s they snort it. Um, and you can tell when people are doing that because they s constantly go <laughs> like that. And they just do that a lot. And, um, you know, anytime anybody is spending excessive amounts of time in their bedroom or a bathroom, if you smell weird smells. Now, it's really, really hard to pinpoint the smell. You know, being in recovery and then being um, at a later time, walking past someone who had recently done it in a, like, a public bathroom, um, I was like, oh, my gosh, what? What is that? You know, so it's really, really hard to pinpoint, except for the heroin, because it does smell like vinegar. It's a pretty distinct smell. Um, you know, so you might wonder, like, what, anything that makes you kind of curious about that, like, why are you taking such a strange item into your room, you know, um, or, th or, you know, the, some people shoot up drugs and, so that one is a little harder to catch. You know, most normal people don't have syringes laying around the house unless they're a diabetic. You know, if you're a diabetic and you have syringes going missing, I would drug test everyone in your family and find out what's happening. Um, so, you know, the, f the feeling um, is a really heavy feeling. Um, for some people, though, in like such as in my case because of kind of a teetering more on the ADHD like more hyperactive personality um, people who are like that heroin is more likely to kind of energize them a little bit um, but most of the time it makes them really really f heavy and the biggest sign of heroin use is nodding off which is because like I was explaining, it cuts off the oxygen to your brain. And so people would just sit there and pass out. And, you know, th and they'll be talking to you. Their eyes might be far away. Um, and their eyes will be, pupils will be pins, just small. The pupils just get really small. And they might be talking to you and then all of a sudden just, and, and then, and then take a deep breath and kind of come back. So that's them slightly, uh, I don't know what, I, I really consider it kind of overdosing over and over and over again, just a little bit, you know, because you slip far enough into that nod and you can overdose. You know, overdose doesn't necessarily mean you've done too much heroin at one time. It can mean you've just been in, a relaxed enough position for a long enough time that you're not really getting enough oxygen to your brain and you die. Um, and so that's some of the feelings and the warning signs of heroin is look look for the tinfoil, look for missing silverware from your home, look for missing syringes if you're someone who has those in your home, look for straws. Why are you taking that straws? Look for straws that are cut in half. Um, look for weird smells. Um, look for the secrecy. You know, if somebody has just always got somewhere to be, you know, it's like you don't have to be this many places all the time. You know, phone conversations that they, 
walk into the other room to answer the phone. Um, you know, all of these are signs that somebody is hiding something and, and, you know, you put a lot of those warning signs together and you can get a pretty good picture of what they may be doing. And, you know, then at that point, the best thing to do is ask them about it. Um, with with op uppers, like cocaine and meth, um, so meth, I've done, I've not done a lot of that. I, I did meth while I was using, during a time that I was sick in withdrawal because I had heard that meth would help you feel better. Um, and it didn't, it gave me a terrible backache, but. Um, so I can't tell you a ton about the warning signs of meth, but what I've seen in other people that I know have done meth is that a lot, pretty much almost every single one of them, they get sores on their face. And they might be, they, they have this weird fidget. So with people who do meth, it's a really quick, like fluid fidget, you know, like they're just all over the place and just constantly moving, you know, and cannot sit still. And the fidget with crack is a little bit different. That's a little bit more jerky movements, you know. So say somebody's trying to eat something and they'll just be like this, you know, and kind of more, you know, pause and go like a robot. Um, and then sores are really common with them. Um, glass pipes or just plain metal pipes in weird places, like why is that on your dresser? You know, um, the cocaine, crack, and meth also has a very distinct smell, um, and you, you can smell it um, if it's anywhere near you, if someone's smoking or, use, or cooking it near you. Um, the smell is, You know, the smell is a mixture of chalky and chemical, which is very, it's very hard to describe it, but if I would have to, so where heroin is kind of vinegary, kind of bittery like that, that the c cocaine is a little bit more chalky. Like if you could smell chalk, but then there's a, another pungent kind of a chemical-y type smell in there with it. That's kind of what it smells like. And Does it smell like peppermint at all, or? Nope, nope, nothing. I mean, neither, uh, none of these, I mean, heroin uh, is almost a good thing you can have that example of the vinegar, because that's really helpful for parents um, to, to kind of know, but with, with that other stuff, it's really hard to explain. But I would say any weird smell that you're just like, what on earth is that? If you can't explain it, you know, and, you know, there are some of these other weird signs. Plus, weird smell should never be coming from your child's room. <laughs> you know, I would always check on that if, if you smell anything strange. So, um, and then with, um, like with weed, you know, I've, I've done a little bit of that in my life. Never was really into smoking pot because, um, gave me a really bad headache and didn't see what all the hype was about. Um, but that one's kind of universally known, like the smell, it smells like a skunk, you know? <laughs> um, and, you know, I don't, I don't really know what any of the warning signs for that would be other than maybe you're, maybe you just have that, sm you can smell it, but I've not been around enough people that have ever smoked a lot of weed to know. Um, and then with like hallucinogens, um, uh, those like mushrooms, um, some mushrooms that get you high, uh, <laughs> you know, you're, it's a hit and a miss what your experience with that is going to be. Um, usually people do that when they're camping or you know, going to a concert or something, and it just makes you hallucinate. The same thing with like acid. Um, there's, there's as far as like warning signs and stuff, that's something your kid is like doing a lot of. I've only ever known one person who is addicted to hallucinogens. It's not 
they aren't really something that I've known people to actually like need treatment and help for. Um, but they're extraordinarily dangerous. Um, you know, the people that I have known who've done a lot of them, they can get something called a drug-induced psychosis and drug-induced schizophrenia. And, you know, I've, I've met people with the after effects of it, and it's really sad. Um, where they were once just like normal people, they're totally sober, not doing that hallucinogen anymore. And you might, s I, I sat next to someone and just, hi, hello, how are you, okay. And then he just started talking about the weirdest stuff at a really inappropriate time. And I was just like, what are you doing? Um, I had a lot of philosophies and about this and life and earth and God and and we were in a meeting and I was trying to pay attention and then later I was told oh he has a drug induced psychosis some people never snap out of that you know it is a very very real possibility that you do hallucinogens and get stuck like that forever and that's scary um, you know let's see this this guy I've known him for about two years now and he's not snapped out of it yet so and then the drug-induced schizophrenia, that's scary too, you know, because usually I, I imagine, I, from what I've heard, the people already have the, ha, already have schizophrenia, but for a lot of people, schizophrenia doesn't kick in until they're between 19 and 25 years old. Um, but this drug-induced schizophrenia can kick it in earlier or kick it into someone who may not have had that gene triggered in them. I don't personally go to raves anymore. Um, when my kids get older, I mean everyone is different and every parent has to make their own decision. But when my kids are older, I will not let them go to raves. I would never let them go to get lucky or get freaky or any of those dance parties um, because I just know to well what happens there. I'm not, I'm not willing to take the risk with them. Um, cause I, it, uh, common thing for people to do is um, give it to you when you don't know. So you can go to a party with every intention of not doing something like that. And then somebody puts a little bit of the EMDMA powder or the molly in your water. And then, you, and then you've done it. You know, and then you're affected by it and you're high. So, um, you know, with the hallucinogens, it's just you're, you're altering your reality. And you're altering the chemicals in your brain. And you are, you are putting yourself at a giant risk of permanent mental illness and um, loss of, abil of cognitive ability. So I've seen that. It's really sad. Um, you know, and, and with some of the more common everyday prescribed things, um, I've seen abused. I've seen Ambien be abused. Um, a sleeping, this is a sleeping pill. I have seen Xanax. Uh, Valium, uh, Clonopin, those are all anti-anxiety medications that get abused. Um, you know, with those, people are mostly just really forgetful, uh, sleepy, hard to wake up, just want to stay in bed all day. Um, you know, and the same thing with people who are drinking. Another effect of the drug use for, for me, smoking off a tinfoil, there's actually a chemical on one side of tinfoil that when it's on fire, it, it causes a reaction. And um, so I have a chronic pulmonary disorder from it, from smoking that chemical from the tinfoil. So when I get a cold, it's like three months of not being able to <laughs> do anything.